Let's come to God in prayer this morning as we come to his word. Uh, Father in heaven, Lord, we pray uh, that as you have spoken to us through the reading of scriptures and through songs so far, that you would also speak to us through this message, that you would open our hearts and minds to hear what you would have us hear. Lord, bless us this day that we may truly know that today is good Friday. Amen. One of the things that we have to ask ourselves and remind ourselves about in, on this day is uh, why we call this Good Friday. We've read through uh, we've read through scriptures and we've heard the story of this day, but when you listen to just the story of this day, it doesn't really sound like it was necessarily all that good a day. Certainly, the disciples experienced a pretty bad day, and so did Jesus in a lot of ways. There's some history out there that, that sort of points to the idea that Good Friday might be called Good Friday because it's just shifted over the years from God's Friday. Uh, just like how um, we had um, God be with you, which eventually over the years shifted to goodbye. Um, but that being said, we still call this Good Friday. Friday. Is there another name that this day should be known by? Perhaps we should call this Ignored Friday. <laughs> Today uh, is supposed to be a statutory holiday in Canada, and, and it is, but with COVID-19 going on, you know, you may not even notice that it was Good Friday, but even if it was a regular year, even if it was a regular time, how many people actually know what Good Friday is all about? School children would have the day off, most offices and businesses would be closed, but how many of them really know why? As with many of the holidays that, the holy days that become holidays, the holy part gets forgotten. We also, of course, live in a culture where many of the people in our country, um, they are not Christ followers at all. They, they don't follow our faith. They don't follow our Lord and Savior. And so for them, the, them this day has no particular meaning at all. But even for Christians, even for Christ followers, there's a temptation to kind of gloss over Good Friday. We want to go right from Palm Sunday to Easter. We want to go right from the hallelujahs and hosannas and here comes the king glorifying statements from Jesus' triumphal entry. We want to go straight from that to the risen Lord and the celebration that is Easter. It's tempting to kind of ignore the pain and the anguish that the story of Jesus' crucifixion reflects. It's disturbing to think about the cruelty that Jesus experienced. It's disturbing, too, to try and gloss over the hard parts of life in general and to pretend that everything is fine. But this is not a day called Ignored Friday. So maybe this day could be called Forsaken Friday. Certainly when Jesus is on the cross and he cries out in the words of Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Certainly we can hear his anguish. And we can, we can all identify on some level 
with Jesus' forsakenness. We have all faced times where we too felt forsaken by our friends, by our, our families, by God himself sometimes. Jesus' cry on the cross gives this, this story such depth, such human depth. Sometimes we feel alone. And in response to the difficult realities of life, we ask God, how could you let this happen? Or, or, or we ask, where is God in this chaos that we call life? We ask, in effect, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our pain is too real. Our expectations of God so set that we might find it hard to move out of this space of forsakenness of the mind and soul. It's really quite helpful for Jesus to hear Jesus offer this lament of pain. But the words that he spoke there were not the only words that Jesus spoke on the cross, and they were certainly not the last words that Jesus offered on the cross. Remember that at the end of his time on the cross, he says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He reconnected with the reality of his love for the Father and the Father's love for him. And, and he was able to say those words in love and trust and faith, even in the midst of his suffering. One of the spiritual challenges of our human existence is to remember those who feel forsaken by God and find ways to offer them the space and time, the love and support to search for meaning and hope amidst the pain. Feeling forsaken is a part of life, a part of life that Jesus was very familiar with. But it it doesn't need to be the end of faith. It certainly wasn't the end of faith for Jesus. And so this is not forsaken Friday either. But perhaps, perhaps we ought to sh change the name to Sad Friday. Certainly there's an awful lot of grief involved in today. And sometimes in this world, we're pretty reluctant to talk about those sad things. We're reluctant to talk about the reality of death or the grief of our lives. But this important story that we talk about on this day and throughout our lives, in this story, we're able to recognize the sadness of Jesus' life, the grief that he experienced, not only on the cross, but throughout his life. But also, we can connect that with the lament that humans feel, other humans feel, in all the areas of life. And in this day, in this day, we also see the sadness and the grief, the reality that it is we who caused Jesus to die. It is our sin that led him to the cross. And we can grieve too during this day and throughout our lives. We can recognize the grief of, of the reality of, of human sin and brokenness in this world. We can, we can imagine some portion of the sadness that Jesus' mother must have felt at the foot of the cross, because we too have been there at the bedside of a dying loved one 
or at someone's side when they were grieving or sick or depressed. We can understand how the disciples could have reacted so badly and, and so variously because we ourselves have found ourselves reacting in, in strange ways at times of sadness and challenge. There is sadness in this crucifixion story. And that's okay. Because there is sadness in our human stories. God has not abandoned us in our sadness, but he upholds us in his everlasting arms of love and grace. Sadness is not the end of God's story, and it doesn't have to be the end of our story either. And so this day is not known as Sad Friday, either. Perhaps we should just call it Difficult Saturday, or Difficult Friday, because, because Good Friday is difficult to understand, difficult to grapple with, difficult to deal with. There are so many things that we must understand about Good Friday. People often struggle over the meaning of Good Friday. Why did Jesus need to die? Why did he need to be sacrificed? We don't have a sacrificial system anymore, and so it can be hard to relate to. But we also struggle, again, with those idea, the idea of bad things happening to good people. Why would God let this happen to Jesus, who was the most good person of all. Others struggle with dwelling in the grief and sorrow for a time. We just want to get over it. We want to get on to Easter and forget about today. We want to get over our grief and sorrow over the passing of a loved one and move on. And so it's difficult. But today is not about how we interpret Good Friday, nor is it about answering the question, why do bad things happen to good people? And the reality is that without the suffering, we cannot get to Easter. And so this is not called good or difficult, excuse me, Friday either. Instead, it is called Good Friday. And we come back to that. We come back to that because it is Good Friday in the sense that the wonder and resurrection depends upon the reality of death. Specifically, Jesus' death, but also our death to sin. And through Jesus, our resurrection into new it is Good Friday because the new life through Jesus is a promise that enables us to find meaning and hope in this life. No matter what the circumstances of this life, it's not the end of the story. It's not the end of things for us. It need not be that we leave this world in sadness. You see, the reality of the crucifixion is framed in the promise of resurrection. And so because of that, because of that reality and the frame with which it is, within which it is placed, we don't ignore the forsakenness. We don't ignore the sadness. We don't ignore the difficulty of life. Instead, we trust that God is with us in life, in death, and in life beyond death. That is why today is Good 
Friday. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that this is indeed Good Friday. That it is good because of your son Jesus. That it is good even in spite of and in some ways because of the suffering. Because that suffering is not the end, but it is leading us to new life. It led your Son Jesus to new life for us. And it leads us to that new life as well. We are so grateful for that. Let us today, Lord God, help us to dwell in the grief for a time and to remember, to remember that that's okay, especially because of the frame of your resurrection promise. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.